That was Buffalo by the Phoenix Foundation. It is nearly 8 o'clock in the morning, and you are still listening to Morning the Morning with Ethan. Lord knows why, but we appreciate the attention. If you want to tell us how bad your morning is going, then tweet us with the hashtag WhatTheMorning, and you'll be in the draw to win a £35 Amazon voucher as reparations for your misery. At JimmyJam88 says, What happened to my boy Chris Tarrant on Millionaire? Why well, he's been replaced with Jezza? Probably beat him up at the canteen. Hashtag WhatTheMorning. Thank you for that wonderful insight, Jimmy Jam. Anyway, today's main topic is the arts, and whether or not the government should do anything to help support young people. And this is varying from actual art, to drama, to music. And we want to hear from you, so we want your opinions and more. If you have an opinion on the arts, please call at 01223 30 12 00 to go live for all but two minutes and tell us about something that no one really care about in the next few years when the mole people take over and plunge us back into darkness. Up next, we'll have Lance Rave to tell us about his personal experience within drama and why he thinks we should continue to fund it. If you'd like to ask any questions, email us, email us at morningshow at gmail.com. That's morning, M-O-U-R-N-I-N-G, show at gmail.com. And we'll choose some of the best questions during the news. Speaking of which, here's an amazing segue. Take it away, Abby. Ethan. Good morning. It's 10.30 a.m. Today, President Donald Trump is to reveal whether the U.S. will ab abandon the nuclear deal with Iran and reimpose sanctions. Mr. Trump has been highly critical of the 2015 accord under which Iran limits its nuclear activities in exchange for sanction relief. European states see it as the best way to stop Iran developing the nuclear bomb. UK Foreign Secretary Boris Johnson urged Mr. Trump not to throw the baby out of the water bath on Monday, while his French counterpart Jeannie Vers Le Drain made clear the France, the UK and Germany will continue to honour the accord. Iran's President Hassan Rouhani was warned that his country could face some problems in the coming months, but stressed it will keep working with the world. The so-called Joint Comprehensive Plan of Action was agreed by Iran and the five permanent members of the UN Security Council, the US, UK, France, China and Russia, plus Germany. It saw Iran agree to limit the size of its stockholds of enriched, enriched uranium, which is used to make reactor fuel but also nuclear weapons, for 15 years and the number of installed to enrich uranium for 10 years. Iran also agreed to modify a heavy water facility so it cannot produce plutonium suitable for a bomb. In return, sanctions imposed by the UN, US and the EU that had crippled Iran's economy were lifted. Iran insists its nuclear program is entirely peaceful and its compliance with the deal has been verified by the International Atomic Energy Agency, IAEA. Britain's rail companies are to launch a public consultant aimed at making tickets fairer and easier to use. The Rail Delivery Group, RDG, which represents rail fares, said about 55 million different fares exist in the current system. The passenger group said reform was overdue. The industry admits passengers are not currently always offered the cheapest fares available due to long-standing anomalies such as split tickets. That means it can be cheaper for passengers to buy serv several tickets for a single journey than one ticket. Another anomaly it highlights is the charging of a peak time fare where half the price is on off-peak service. The industry has pledged that average fares will not rise as a result of any reform. Here's what students at Long Road Sixth Form College have to say about the changes in rail prices. Okay, <coughs> In the local sports news, Cambridge United finished their season in style with an impressive 5-0 win over Port Vale at the Abbey Stadium last Saturday in Captain Leon Legg's final game in an usher. All five of Cambridge goals were from dis different scores with right back Bradley Hallidad scoring the pick of the bunch with a stunning long-range effort, his first goal since April of last year. This result means that Cambridge United will finish 12th place in League 2. Peterborough United cannot emulate the U.S. goal field end of the season run out as they stopped to a 2-0 loss away at Portsmouth Crankton Park in their final League One fixture on Saturday afternoon. Portsmouth captain Brent Pittman scored a brace that commended 
Peterborough to their fifth loss in the last six matches, which means that they will finish the League One season in ninth, seven points of the playoff. Now for the weather, occasionally rain pushing east across northern areas, fine and warm in the east, perhaps a sharp shower. Today, staying warm for central and eastern month, England, this afternoon with sunny spells, but a risk of the odd shower. Rain will push east across northern areas, mostly light and turning cooler with the west. Tonight, any showers in eastern areas will die out or move away to leave more peaceful dry spells and odd mist patches. Cooler, freshening winds and drizzle pushing into the northwest late. Thank you for that, Abby. Now, I'd like to welcome to the studio Lance Rave, who is a student at Long Road Sixth Form College who does drama, and he, he's here to tell us about why we should encourage the arts. Welcome, Lance. Hi, good morning. So, Lance, why do you feel we should be encouraging the arts in education? Well, I feel like it helps people to gain confidence, those that, I mean, personally, from my own experience, I was always shy growing up, but once I did drama, I overcame that and came out of my show, so it's pretty helpful for a lot of people. So, do you think we should be encouraging the government to increase funding for the arts? I'd say so. It's quite important to focus on people's confidence. You know, when people always say, like, you need to work on your mental health and, and always take care of it, I feel like just having confidence in yourself also helps to seek out help. <laughs> ah, good. So, what do you think we can do to encourage more people to join in the arts and to encourage the government to continue their funding? I'd say promote it as much as others promote um, other clubs like sports or like ballet or other things like that because. Like I said, it's as important as other things in terms of helping you come out of your show and be more confident. Thank you. Now, I've got some small facts here to continue with uh, all of the stuff to do with the arts. Uh, a user uh, at Twitter, Miss Perillo, said, Three years ago, I went to see a musical with some friends, The Book of Mormon at the West End. We went because we wanted to see the musical theatre actor at the time was A.J. Holmes. We were seated next to someone who was also a fan of that same group he was in and became friends with her because of that. Three years later, we still meet at musical theatre events such as West End Live, which celebrates the arts. And it's a huge, big family, and it's accepting and open to anyone, no matter their creed. It helps many people overcome their anxieties and confidence issues, turning them into people they always wanted to be. So, I can see where you're coming from that. So, thank you for that. Uh, the reasons like this says, uh, at, says, Law... <laughs> Laura Barnes here, the help to boost mental health in young people, it creates community, making people feel comfortable with who they are, which is why we need to continue to fund the arts instead of sports groups, because they're not given enough credit, and they should be. Mm -hmm. Thank you for coming in, Lance. Thank you for having me. Up next, we're going to continue to talk about the Chris, Tarrant the Chris Tarrant controversy about why he's been replaced soon after this song from Dave Dobbin and the Herbs. It is Dragons and Demons. <laughs> <laughs> 